In this video, I'm going to show you as quickly as possible how to take your brand new Bamboo Lab A1 3D printer all the way from the box to completing your first print. This whole process can be done relatively quickly by most people with no experience, but there are a few short steps to follow with this partly built machine. I'll be covering all of the steps you need to go through, whether you have just the A1 printer or whether you also have the combo package that includes the AMS Lite, which allows filament changes during a print. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. The very first stage with this setup is to clear an area where you can lay everything out first. A tabletop or desk is ideal for this. Take everything out of the box and lay it out so you can see what you have. Once you've had a good look at everything, find your print surface and remove it from its packaging. The printer base has the movable bed where the print surface attaches, but you need to remove a protective film first. With the film removed, line the back of the print surface up with the corresponding notch on the back of the bed and then lower the front until the magnets pull it down. Be careful to only hold the front edges as you lower the print surface down so that you don't trap your fingers between the bed and the magnets. With the print surface attached, lift the printer up onto the side that doesn't have the screen attached. This gives you access to four holes with red rings around them. This is where securing screws that need to be removed are located, and to remove them you'll need to open up the supplied toolkit and take out the H4 Allen key. Turn the screws anti-clockwise to loosen them and then unscrew them completely and remove. Once they're removed, lay the base back down and your bed will now slide back and forth. Next, stand your printer frame up with a bit of room around it and then carefully pass the printer base through at an angle until you can line the frame up with cutouts in the base and sit it down flat. Now cut all of the cable ties around the frame and remove the foam and cardboard packaging holding the tool head and x-axis gantry in place. Slide the heat bed all the way to the front of the printer and turn it round so that you can access the rear and then remove the cover in the centre of the rear of the base. This cover initially pulls straight up but then slides back so that you can remove it fully. You now need to find the bag of screws labelled for base housing and insert them into all of the visible holes that have a green ring. There are two holes that are under the base but leave those for now. Tighten all of the accessible screws being careful not to crank them up too tight. Just turn them clockwise until they stop without forcing anything. With the 10 accessible screws tight, slide the bed to the rear and turn the printer around again so that you can access the front two holes and then put the last couple of screws in and tighten them. Now turn the printer back round and reattach the cover, sliding the front in all the way before pushing the back down into place. If you're just getting started in 3D printing, then you may not know about our video sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay are well known for their PCB manufacture, but that's not all they do. PCBWay now have an extensive range of other manufacturing methods, including large scale 3D printing, CNC machining, injection molding, and laser cutting. Check out their website from the links in the description below to get a quick free quote and $5 off your first order. Now, back to that A1 setup. Now, if you haven't been working at a table or desk so far, you're going to need to find one to use for the next stage, as we need to gain access to the underside of the base without damaging any of the cables. The best way to do this is to lay the printer on its back with the base hanging off the edge of a table or desk. Before you do this, use some of the packaging to protect the printer and the surface you're laying it on. With the printer secure and in a position where it can't fall forward off the table, take the large grey cable box on the end of the wiring coming from the frame and insert it into the cutout in the base and then slide it up. Make sure that the Type-C plug has been inserted correctly and that the cable box is flush with the base of the printer. Screw in the pre-installed screw to hold it in place. There are two plugs that can now be inserted into the colour-coded sockets above and then a third cable that needs to be routed under the flip-up section on the left of the cable box before also being plugged into the remaining socket. With all of the wiring now in place, you can lift the printer back onto the table, sit it down onto its base and rotate the screen to face forwards. Slide the tool head over to the middle to give yourself room to install the purge wiper. This slides in from the back and is held in place with one screw from the bag labelled for purge wiper. If you have the AMS light, then now is a great time to assemble it. Start by sitting the AMS body onto the stand and then hold it in place with the four screws from the bag labelled for AMS stand. With all of these four screws tightened, find the spool holders and note the colour coding on each one. You should have two yellow and two green. Not surprisingly, the green ones slot onto the shafts with green on the end and the yellow ones match with the yellow shafts. Slot each one into place, giving it a firm push until it clicks home. If any of them don't locate easily, rotate the spool holder until you feel it start to push in. 
with the AMS light assembled, sit it on the right hand side of your printer and find the four clear tubes that connect the AMS to the print head. There are two different lengths of tubes and the shorter ones attach to ports one and two on the AMS light and the longer ones go to ports three and four. The tubes simply push into the four connectors on the top of the tool head and then into the receptacles on the AMS. With the filament tubes all installed, all that's left to do is plug the AMS cable into the corresponding socket on the printer base. If you don't have the AMS light to use with your A1, then assemble and attach the included spool holder to the top of the frame and connect the included filament tube to any one of the four connectors on the top of the hot end and the spool holder connector. You can now plug in the main power lead and finally turn your printer on. The first thing to do once your printer fires up is to select your language and region and then put in your Wi-Fi details. Once you've selected your Wi-Fi network and entered your password, your printer will give you the option of adding it to your Bamboo account with a QR code. If you don't have a Bamboo Lab account yet, then it's very easy to set one up with the smartphone app. With the app installed and an account set up, you can then use the phone app to scan the QR code on the printer's screen to add it to your Bamboo account. With the printer added, you can now control it through the app and even watch the feed from the camera on the printer wherever you go. The next stage of setup, however, is to calibrate the printer, which is done on the machine, but is almost fully automated. All you have to do is hit start and the printer will begin to self calibrate. Make sure you have the printer sitting where you want it to be when printing, as you will have to recalibrate if you move it afterwards. The calibration takes approximately 15 minutes and you need to leave it completely alone while it runs through a series of movements to do some quite clever stuff. The first thing it does is runs through a process called vibration compensation. In basic terms, what it does is puts a range of different movement frequencies through the printer's mechanical components and listens to see how each component reacts. Every axis will have its own frequency that it will resonate at given a chance. So when it finds out each axis frequency, the printer can then compensate to ensure that no print defects are caused. After this, it runs through a process for motor noise cancellation. To do this, each axis is put through a number of repeated movements while sensors listen with the aim of reducing audible noise from the motors. I found this pretty awesome and you can actually hear the motors getting quieter with each pass till eventually you can't hear anything at all. When this is all finished, you are very nearly ready to print. You may be told that there is an update available at this stage. If there is, let it go ahead. It won't take long. Otherwise, now it's time to load some filament. If you have the AMS, then slot the filament roll onto any one of the spool holders, making sure that the direction of the filament will let it feed into its filament tube. Once the filament is pushed in a little way, the AMS will take over and feed the filament down the tube, ready to be printed with. If you use Bamboo Lab filament, then the filament material and color will be automatically detected at this stage. If you use another manufacturer's filament, then you'll need to enter these details yourself. To do this, use the printer's screen to select the filament page and then select the reel you want to edit. Press edit and then select the material and color you've just loaded. If you don't have the AMS, then sit the filament spool onto the external spool holder and manually feed the filament down the filament tube until it's just above the tool head. Then use the printer's screen to select the filament page and then the external spool tab. Here you can enter the filament material and color, but you also need to load the filament from the external spool. When you select load, the printer heats the hot end up and then prompts you to push the filament down the tube at the right time. It then does the rest by purging a bit of filament and then flicking it away using the wiper. You are now ready to print. I would advise that your first print be one from the included SD card. These files are ready to go with PLA filament. So starting the print is simply a case of selecting print files and then selecting the file you want to print, then next. The printer will then run through a couple of quick checks, then start to print. On the display, you'll see an estimated time that the print is going to take and its progress throughout the print. When it's finished, wait a little while to let the bed cool down before trying to remove it. This is for two reasons. Firstly, depending on the material, the bed could be hot enough to hurt until it's cooled down a bit. And secondly, because the print surface is designed to let the print release when it's cooled. So removing the print will be easier when it's cooled down. Once it's cooled, the best way to remove your print is to remove the entire magnetic print surface and then flex it in both directions, which will either release the print or make it much easier for it to be pulled free. Replace the print surface, being careful to line it up straight again, and then you're ready to run another print straight away if you want to. 
If you don't want to print anything else, then you can turn the printer off. However, don't turn your printer straight off as soon as the print is finished, as heat soak can cause a clog in your tool head. Instead, give it about five minutes or check the display to see that your hot end temperature is below about 80 degrees before turning it off. You're now fully set up and ready to print whatever you like with your brand new Bamboo Lab A1 3D printer. You're not just limited to printing models on the SD card either. Click over here to see how to use Bamboo Studio to find and slice other models ready to use on your new printer. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.